Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design connections in RAM Connection Standalone. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on a beam splice that has already been created. If we take a closer look at this particular joint, we would notice that the left and the right beam are the same size and they've been defined as HSS round sections. In addition to that, we'll also notice that this joint has axial loads imposed on it. That being said, let's go ahead and start our connection design. To do that, we're going to go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. Now in the Connection Assignment dialog, you're going to notice that your filters will already be set for a beam splice connection. Now our particular joint has round HSS sections with an axial load. Here we can see that we have two different end plate beam splice joints that have recently been added to RAM connections. And both of these beam splice joints can satisfy hollow structural sections with an axial load. Let's go ahead and select the one that's appropriate for rounded sections. I'm gonna select my connection template Click on the Assign button and then click Close. Now after performing the connection design, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look in the joint selection area at the bottom left hand corner of my screen. Here I'll be able to see the status of the connection design. It'll report my interaction ratio along with my controlling load combination and it will be color coded to indicate the status of the connection design. Here I can see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, meaning that we have satisfied the code check requirements without producing any errors or warnings. If we would like some additional information regarding our connection design or if we want to make any changes, we can do that via the connection pad. To access the connection pad, click on the edit icon and then select combined connection. Here we'll be able to see a variety of different parameters that we can go ahead and modify, including the thickness of the plate, the material of the plate, the welds, and bolting information. For this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if 3 quarter inch A325 end bolts would still satisfy the code check requirements. I'm going to select the new bolts, click OK, and then I'll be able to see that immediately my status of my connection will be updated. Looks like three quarter inch diameter bolts will be satisfactory, so I'm gonna go ahead and detail it accordingly. In addition to that, I can modify your number of bolts. We can change the distance between bolts and also the hole type. Now at this point, I do have a satisfactory connection design, so I'm gonna go ahead and review my connection report before exiting the connection pad. To do that, we'll go ahead and click on our results icon from the connection pad. Now you're gonna notice that the contents of your report are indexed over the left-hand pane. This will allow you to jump to different areas of the report conveniently. Let's go ahead and scroll down to review the geometric considerations and the design check information. All of my geometric considerations have been satisfied, so therefore this connection design did not produce a warning. In addition to that, I can go ahead and take a look at all the design checks that were performed. I can see that my controlling interaction ratio is for the yielding of the end plate at 0.71. Now if I'd like some additional information regarding the formulas, I can go ahead and click on the View Formulas icon and this will show me all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my connection pad. The next thing I can do while in the connection pad is review my DXF drawings. In RAM Connection Standalone, you can go ahead and customize your DXFs and we can also export these DXFs. Here we'll be able to see all of the detailing that will be appropriate for this particular 
joint. Now at this point I did make some changes to this particular connection design. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the save icon. Once I'm done, let's go ahead and click out of the connection pad and I can see that my connection detailing has been updated. At this point, this concludes our process for assigning an end plate beam splice connection to a hollow structural section for the purposes of resisting axial load. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.